Uh, now we're joined by former White House press secretary. You know that face. His name is Ari Fleischer. Ari, right off the top, would you want to be President Trump's press secretary? <laughs> well, Stuart, let me just put it this way. It's, it, being the press secretary of the president, including to President Trump, is a fantastic job. There's no better higher honor. As for me personally, I, I spent 21 years in that town. I'm done. I've had it. I, I wanted to become John McCain, Mitt Romney, Donald Trump, or their successors, press secretary. I'm, I'm happily retired from active duty. That, sir, is an honest answer, and we much appreciate it, guaranteed. I do want to ask you about the three CEOs who have resigned from President Trump's Manufacturing Council. One in particular I'm going to pick on, that's Mr. Kenneth Frazier from Merck. He said that he was resigning as a matter of personal conscience about the president's remarks about Charlottesville. I think that that is bringing personal political viewpoints uh, and putting them ahead of your responsibility as a CEO of a publicly traded company. I don't think you should have done it. What say you, Ari? You, you know, these CEOs are under tremendous pressure. In, in their polite circles, none of the, their colleagues tend to like Donald Trump. College educated, graduate degree educated people almost overwhelmingly vote Democratic these days, and they, they're anti-Trump. And so to join with Donald Trump put them through a lot of pressure to do it, and so I think many of them are looking, how can we get out of this, how can we escape? But in the long-term vision, I would recommend them not do so. If that's a political judgment, political call. And from a business point of view, you want to have a seat at that table. You want to right. get to know the president, the vice president, the top cabinet secretaries who sit and attend those meetings. And so I think it's a bad business call. Uh, it's a personal political call. Uh, hold on one second for me, Ari. I've got uh, Steve Forbes with me, and I want to pose the same question to you, Steve. Uh, Mr. Frazier at Merck has resigned from the Manufacturing Advisory Council because of personal, his personal conscience. I say that's a mistake. What say you? On, on any of those big panels where we have a lot of people on, Stuart, depending on the political controversy, you're always going to get people coming on and off. It's just the nature of the game. Whether the pressures they face or they think it's uh, not a good thing, and they, and they feel they're going to get their views known to the administration anyway at the end of the day. So uh, they come and they go. <laughs> they it's come just and the they name go. of the game. Ari, how do you, how do you, what's your comment on the relationship between President Trump, Senate Republicans, President Trump, big business, President Trump, and the GOP generally. It seems to be sour on all fronts. Well, it it's definitely hasn't proved to have any big legislative successes yet, but I'm still patient, Stuart. I'll tell you that. You know, in the Bush years, in 2001, we had a 50-50 Senate, even less support than President Trump has. The tax cuts got done in June of 2001, but our biggest second initiative, education reform, didn't get done until January of 2002. Legislation is tough in all times. It's particularly tough in today's divisive era. Uh, but I still am holding out hope that Congress and the President will get this done and figure it out. It's just too big to fail, and they all know that. I've been saying this morning that his best chance for a win is this infrastructure proposal, because there's some support for that on both sides of the aisle. There's been traditional support for it up and down the line. This could be his big win. What say you? I think you might be right, but that's not ideologically very satisfying. You know, infrastructure is good nuts and bolts, and the government should do good nuts and bolts, but that doesn't change the country. What needs to change in this country is more personal responsibility, more growth, economic growth particularly, to create jobs and higher wages for struggling Americans, blue-collar Americans. That's the future for Republicans, and that's where Donald Trump really and the Congress need to focus on. Uh, same thing with the repeal and replace of Obamacare, because it's a wet blanket on economic growth. The more, if Donald Trump is successful and the Congress is successful on getting growth of 3% 3% GDP with rising wages, the sky's the limit for Republicans, and that's what they should keep in mind. Ari Fleischer, happily retired from the President's <laughs> Press Secretary job. Uh, you, know, you might be tempted back, you never know, but I don't think so. <laughs> we hear you. <laughs> Thank you, Ari. We appreciate you being with us, sir. Thanks very much. Thanks, Stuart.